hungry. Okay, Ivy. I'm going to show everybody how I feed you. Yummy. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about your jumping spider's diet, covering options and how to feed and what to expect when it comes to getting your little one doing that very cute hunting wiggle so that they live long and healthy lives in your care. Part two, we'll be talking about common problems, how to get your reluctant eater to eat and solutions to feeding problems. So keep an eye out for that in the next video. So you have decided on owning a jumping spider. You will either be getting a baby sling or a sub-adult or adult. If you're going for a baby, your breeder should have ensured that they are hunting well. This means that they will be in their sixth or seventh instar or molt and be happily feeding on fruit flies. Local reptile shops, breeders or online invert shops will carry fruit flies. If you're receiving your jumper in the post, your breeder should have included enough fruit flies for the journey. And if you ask, they're usually more than happy to include some extra in a separate pot to keep you going until you have a good source of fruit flies. Baby jumping spiders need to be offered fruit flies every day, so make sure you have what you need so they don't run out leaving a sad baby needing food. When buying fruit flies, you want to get the flightless ones because these are much easier for your baby spider to catch. They love a little challenge, but ultimately we want them fed. So live fruit flies that can't fly are the perfect option. If you avoid leaving your flightless fruit flies in direct sunlight, they should stay flightless. Usually you'll receive what's called a fruit fly culture. This is nutrients for the fruit flies in a tub with some thin wood strips for the flies to crawl on. In the tub will be a thick cream colored substance at the bottom and there should be plenty of live flies wandering about. You may also see some larva which will grow into more fruit flies. To feed your baby jumping spider, you want to first put him in a small enclosure with one or two flies. It's recommended that you grab the flies carefully with tweezers or fingers and put them in the enclosure rather than tipping them or patting the fly culture. Again, I will talk more about why in a further video in more detail, but simply put, you could risk pesky grain mites entering your spider enclosure from the fruit fly culture if you tap the contents in. For this reason, it's recommended to store your fruit fly culture tub away from your spider enclosures to avoid transmission of mites. Once you've witnessed him catch flies in a small container, you can move him to an appropriate enclosure for a baby. Keep an eye on him and make sure he can easily chase down his prey in his enclosure. If you see he's struggling, just pop him in a tiny tub for feeding times until he's confident at hunting. Most baby jumpers have no issue at all as they will have been chasing down fruit flies with their breeders before coming to you. After a few molts, usually around three, your jumper will want something more nutritious to eat and it's best for them to have a, a variation in their diets too. Just like people, every jumping spider will have their own preferences and some will be great hunters and others not so much. It's very normal for male jumping spiders to be less interested in food than their female counterparts. Males are much more laid back overall and slow down sooner, reserving energy for reproduction rather than eating. It's the ladies that like to eat. For this stage of their life, you'll want to get some blue or green bottle flies, curly wing flies, extra small locusts or wax worms for them to try. Reptile shops and online breeders or sellers will have these. There are even shops on eBay to source your live prey if you search live fly casters. The flies tend to come in small pots in the form of casters. These casters can take up to a week to hatch into flies, so make sure you have advanced food to avoid the very common feeding panic amongst us jumping spider keepers when we can't get any to hatch and the spiders are looking longingly at us. I'll touch on what you can try in this situation when we talk about issues with eating in part two. With fly casters, the best thing to do is to separate them into two pots and put half of your casters in the fridge. These will not hatch until you're ready uh, and take them out of the fridge. Just make sure you label them and put them away from your food that your family might be curious about. They're not raisins. Leave the amount you want to feed in a separate pot in the sunlight if you can or above a heat source to warm them up. In a few days, you'll hopefully have juicy flies to pop in your enclosure. Feed one per five to seven days for bigger spiders. We really want to avoid overfeeding our jumping spiders, even though some jumpers, especially the girls in my experience, will eat all day every day if they're allowed. 
The reason not to indulge them is simple. If they get too big too soon, they'll molt sooner. The more they molt, the more they mature, the more they mature, the sooner they die. So keeping them a little bit peckish is best for a long, healthy life. If your spider doesn't seem interested in their food after a few hours, just remove it so it doesn't get on their nerves. Look out for my next video where we problem solve eating issues. Mama, can I help say this last bit? Okay, Finnegan, go for it. Thank you, Mama. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any specific questions you would like to hear covered, please feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.